welcome to the next module. In this module, we are going to continue studying the dynamic programming technique. We do this by considering the famous knapsack problem. So this is a famous problem in combinatorial optimization. In this case, we are given a knapsack with a limited capacity together with a collection of items with known weights and, and values. And our goal is to, is to select a sub-collection of these items so that their total weight does not exceed the capacity of, of our bag, while the total value is as large as possible. This is a, a classical problem in combinatorial optimization with hundreds of applications in, in areas like pla planning, scheduling, resource allocations, and others. It is important to note that uh, in applications, weights and values may actually denote various things. To give an example, consider the following application. Suppose we're given a time interval and the set of TV commercials. So, for example, this interval might be just 100 seconds. What we would like to do is to select some set of these TV commercials with the following two constraints. First of all, we, of course, would like to maximize the total revenue from these commercials. On the other hand, we would like, uh, we would like uh, the sum of the length of these TV commercials to not exceed uh, the length of the available time interval. In the, another application, another toy application, another example, uh, suppose that we're given a limited budget and what we would like to do is to select, is to purchase some, uh, some set of machines to maximize their total performance. So in this case, uh, our capacity is actually our budget and the values of, 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 of the machines are actually their performance. Okay, so there are two natural variations of the knapsack problems. Uh, first of all, the knapsack may be either fractional or discrete. In the fractional version, we, we assume that we can take any fraction of any item. On the other hand, in the discrete case, each item is either taken or not. Okay, so in turn, for the discrete knapsack problem, there are two further variants. Uh, knapsack with repetitions or knapsack without repetitions. In the first case, we are allowed to take any number of any items. In the second case, knapsack without repetitions, uh, uh, we are allowed to take only a single copy of each item. As we already know, the fractional knapsack can be solved by a natural greedy algorithm. Namely, uh, we just keep repeating the following, the following step. At each iteration, we just take, uh, uh, take the maximum amount of item whose, uh, uh, whose value per, per unit of weight is as large as possible. It is not difficult to show that this leads to an optimal solution in the fractional case. But this strategy does not work for the discrete version of the knapsack problem. So instead, we will design together a dynamic programming solution. So before going into the details of a solution, let's consider an example. So consider uh, an, a bag of the total capacity 10 and assume that we have four items with, with weights uh, 6, 3, 4 and 2 and with values 30, 14, 16 and 9 respectively. Then for the version, uh, for the discrete version of, of the knapsack problem where repetitions are not allowed, the, the optimal value is equal to 46. So to achieve this optimal value, uh, it is enough to take the first item and the third item. Okay? On the other hand, if we do not allow repetitions, if we do allow repetitions, I'm sorry, then, uh, then the optimal value increases to 48. So in this case, to achieve this value, uh, we can take, for example, the first item and two copies of the last item. Finally, if we are allowed to take fractions of items, then the optimal value increases again, and in this case, it is equal to 40, uh, 48 and a half. And to achieve this value, we can take the first item, the second item, and one half of the last item. We will now design a dynamic programming solution for the variant of the knapsack problem with repetitions. 
recall that in this case we are allowed to take any number of items, any number of the av available items. Okay, so to formally state this this problem, so denote the total capacity of our uh, of our bag by capital W, the weights of the n items by uh, W zero and so on W n minus one, and their values by B zero and so on V n minus one. So our goal is again to select some subset of these items, uh, probably. Uh, multiple copies of some items so that their total weight does not exceed capital W while their total value is as large as possible. As you remember, the most important step in designing a dynamic programming solution is coming up with the right notion of a subproblem. And one way of, of finding this right notion of a subproblem is to consider the, optimal, the structure of an optimal solution. So consider some optimal solution for, for our bag and assume that we have some item WI in it. So a simple but crucial observation is the following. If we take this ice item out of our solution, then what we get is a solution for a knapsack of total capacity W minus WI and it must also be optimal solution for this particular capacity. Why is that? Well, for a simple reason. If this would not be, if this were not optimal a solution for, the, for a bag of capacity W minus WI, then the initial capacity would also not be optimal, right? So this allows us to to, uh, to define the following sub-problem. Uh, for a parameter u, let's define value of u to be equal to the optimal weight, uh, to the optimal value, I'm sorry, of, of the back of total capacity u, using the same, the same items, of course. This allows us to write down the following recurrence relation. Value of u is equal to the maximum over all items i, such that wi is not greater than u of the following quantity. Value of u minus wi plus vi. So this recurrence relation just reflects the fact that in order to get an optimal solution for, uh, for the back of capacity W, we can actually take some, uh, some optimal solution for a smaller capacity, uh, namely w, uh, U minus WI, I'm sorry, and add the ice item to this solution. This will give us a solution for a capacity U, and this will add VI to the total, uh, to the total value of this smaller solution. Right? So when there are no such items, in this case the maximum is taken over an empty set, we assume that it is equal to zero. So another, uh, another base case is also uh, corresponds to the case when u is equal to zero and in this case value of zero is equal to zero also, of course, right? Because we have no items to put in our, in our, in our back of capacity zero. So when we have this recurrence relation, uh, as usual, it is just a technicality to, to transform it into a, rec into a recursive algorithm. And this is what we're going to do now, and this is what you see now uh, at the slide. So what we see here on the slide is a recursive algorithm that we get out of the recurrence relation that we've just discovered. As usual, we, we use a table T to memo uh, memorize all the uh, all the intermediate results, namely all the solutions for, uh, for, for sub-problems uh, for the back of capacity U, where U ranges from, from zero to, to capital W. Okay, so the knapsack function takes three parameters, W, V, and U, where W and V are just lists of, of all weights and values of our items, and U is the current capacity of the knapsack. We only start computing value of u if it is not uh, stored in the table. If it is not, then we do the following. We first initialize it with zero. Then we go through all n items, and for, for any item, for any item i whose weight does not exceed u, we try to improve our current t of u using item i. Namely, we, we consider a solution for a uh, 
for the problem uh, u minus wi, and we try to add the i's item to this solution. If this gives value which is higher than t of u, then we improve t of u. Okay? Uh, then, uh, as you remember, it is usually possible, possible to transform a recursive algorithm into an iterative one. In this case, it is particularly easy since what we need to do is to solve all subproblems for u ranging from 0 to, w, to, to capital W. We can do this just in a straightforward fashion by gradually increasing u. And we will use just an array for storing all the values value of u. So what you see here is the, the corresponding iterative implementation of the same algorithm. Here, instead of using dictionary, we use just an array T of, of size capital W plus 1. Then, for U ranging from, from 1 to, to capital W, we compute the value T of U using exactly the same recurrence relation. Okay? So, the next... Uh, before proceeding, let's, let's consider an example and let's, uh, let's review the, the example that we've seen previously and, uh, and assume that we've already computed uh, all the values uh, in our table except for the last one. Namely, so what we're computing right now is what is the optimal solution for the knapsack of, of total capacity 10. So what we see here is that there are actually four possibilities. Either we add the first item to the solution of, uh, of capacity 4, or we add the second item to the solution of capacity 7, or we, uh, or we add the third item to the solution of total capacity 6, or finally we add the last item to the solution of total capacity 8. For all these, uh, for all these capacities, we already know the optimal solutions. So we just compute the maximum of four values. And it turns out that in this case, the, the maximum value is equal to 48. Uh, which, which convinces actually that this is indeed an optimal value for, for this case. Okay, now let's, uh, let's conclude the lesson, the video, by, by revisiting the sub-problems. So as you remember, another way of, uh, of defining the right sub-problems is to, to design a brute force solution and then to, to somehow optimize it. So when the brute force solution in this case is not so difficult to implement. Namely, since we need to find some optimal collection of items, let's just populate the current set of items one by one. Uh, so and what you see here is actually an implementation of this approach. So this recursive procedure uses the parameter items, which actually exactly stores the items that we're going to put in our, in our knapsack. So we start with an, empty, uh, with an empty sequence of items and then we recursively add the current item uh, to, to, the, uh, uh, to the list items and make a recursive call, right? And we only add the item if the current, uh, if adding it does not exceed the total weight. Okay, so this gives us just a brute force solution. We actually, we essentially go through all possible subset of items. So f then finally to, to get a dynamic programming solution out of this brute force solution, it remains actually to note that in this case we are not interested in the, in the whole subset of items. What we are interested in is just in their total weight. So just by, re by replacing the, the collection of items by their total weight, we actually get back our previous dynamic programming solution.